Hey guys, in this video we're looking at uh, greatest common factors and factor by grouping. So this is the first of the factoring videos and factoring is super incredibly important for the rest of math. It's one of those skills that if you don't have, it will come back and, and just keep biting you over and over and over. Um, so I really encourage you to get this these next few sections down. Um, so first part of that is something called greatest common factor. Um, last section we did the distribute thing where we had something outside parentheses and ran it through when we were multiplying. Um, greatest common factor is like reverse distribute. So we're trying to figure out what the thing was, what's the biggest thing we could take out front of the parentheses. And that's what factoring is. It's going to be kind of the opposite of uh, multiplication. So just for instance, if you think of the number 6, if I factor it, it's 2 times 3. And if I go 2 times 3, that makes 6. So 2 times 3 is the multiply, and then breaking the 6 down is the factoring. So last section, we're multiplying. This section, we're trying to get it broken down into the pieces that it would multiply from. So, okay, greatest common factors. Um, we look at the three terms here and go, do all three terms have anything in common? <clears throat> so the last term doesn't have an x, so x is out of play. I look at the numbers, I got 9, 12, 15. So hopefully you can see that 3 would be the biggest number that divides into all of those. So if I take a 3 out front, then I have to figure out what goes 3 times what would get me back to that 9x squared. So 3 times 3 would get me the 9, and then I need the x squared. And I have this plus. And then you're basically going 3 goes into 12 4 times, because 3 times 4 will make the 12. So you can kind of think of it as division also. And then the x would be there. 3 goes into 15, 5. And so 3 times negative 5 gets me that negative 15. So this is what's called our uh, greatest common factor, or often um, GCF is how it'll get referred. And greatest common factors are super important because they are going to be the first step of all the factoring problems. And not every problem will have a GCF, but every problem you have to look and see if there's a GCF, be able to spot it and get it out of the way. Um, if you're if you have troubles on that, like, again, this whole chapter ends up much much harder um, because this thing is kind of the thing that makes this hard to figure out what to do. Um, if you can't get that out of the way, you can't get to the inside piece, and then you're kind of stuck at step one. Um, so very important skill. Um, let's check out this next one. So for the numbers, I got 81, 27, 15. Um, you know these these have a lot of threes going on, but if I look at that 15, it's a three times a five. So my only choices are going to be a 3 times a 5. So a good way to kind of approach greatest common factors is look at the least interesting number and figure out what's in there, and then that's going to tell you what, what your GCF could be. So 5 doesn't go into these, but 3 does, so I can take a 3 out. Um, x squared, x, and x squared. So the rule on that is smallest power of whatever it is, x in this case, can come out. So since that one's x the first, I have, I'm limited to taking just an x out. And that's because I can take 1x out of 2x's, but I can't take 2x's out of 1x. So that's why we're taking the smallest one. Uh, for the y's, y, y, and then y squared, everything has at least one y, so I can bring y out. And then here we go, uh, 3 into 81 would be 27, or 3 times 27 gets me back to 81. I took 1x out, which means there's still one in there. I took the y out right here, so that one's done. And you can just kind of multiply those together in your head and make sure they make that. And that's kind of your little double check to make sure you're doing it on the GCF. So the next piece would be plus uh, 3 goes in 27 nine times. X, Y, I took both those out, so this is the only thing that's still in there. And if you look, it'll multiply, it'll come back. And then that would leave a 5. And then I took out an X and a Y. I had two of each. That's going to leave one of each inside. Um, so these next uh, four are more GCF problems, um, but these are the ones I would have the students try in class. So, looks like I liked threes when I was writing <laughs> this lecture. So 15, 12, and 21, you know, with the, even again on the 15, you can see a three and a five, and so it's, it's gotta be the three uh, if anything will work. And this time I got an X on that last term, so I can do a three X, and then that's gonna leave a five right here, and then X squared, because three times five, 15, X times X squared, X cubed. Three there, go this four times, and then one X left. Three into that one is seven and then we took the x out. Again, you can always distribute to check your GCF. Um, this one, let's see, we got x's, y's, and z's, so I don't have the same letter everywhere, so can't do anything with that. 22, 55, 33, hopefully you can see the 11 that's hanging out in there, so we'll just take an 11 out front. 
and that's going to leave a 2x squared, a plus 5y squared, and a minus 3z squared. Okay, so number 5, we got um, 12, 3, and 18. So 3, it's got to be a 3, right? I don't know what's all the 3s on this, but I like 3s this day. Um, but it's, a, it's the only thing it could possibly be because 3 only goes into itself. So I'll grab the 3 out front, and then I had x4, x3, x2, so I'm going to do x squared out front. That's going to leave me a 4 uh, x squared. And then here, um, I took the 3 out and 2 of the x's, so that's going to just leave 1 x there. And then 3 goes into this 6 times, and I got both x squared out front already. And then the last one, uh, 4 is kind of our least interesting number, and it goes into 12 and 20, so that's going to be our that piece of our GCF. And then, let's see, x's, it looks like I can do an x squared. And y's, it looks like my smallest one is plain y down there. So 4 into 20 would be 5, and I'd have 2 x's left. And I'm taking out one Y, so I'd have two Y's left. And then four to 12 would be three. On there, I'm gonna have an X left and a Y left. And then this one, notice so I'm taking out everything, right? So that doesn't disappear, because when I go distribute, distribute, I need something here so that piece comes back. So when you have all of it, if it's a negative, it's just a negative one. If this had been a positive, it'd just be a positive one there. And hopefully you can see if I did my distribute, boom, then I get that piece. And then in the second half of this section, we get um, some four-term problems, and the technique we're going to use for those is called factoring by grouping. Um, this is a good spot to introduce this little chart that I'm going to toss up real quick. Um, so this should be in the notes at the beginning of the factoring section. Uh, this is kind of telling you how, and it's for 4-6, so it's after we have all the techniques. But this is sort of telling you how to figure out which thing to do when. And so the thing we just did, is there a GCF? That's the first thing you do for every factoring problem. Um, yes, factor out the GCF. The next thing is, is it prime? And with those GCF problems, it was. They didn't go further. But for pretty much every other problem you do, they, they mostly do go further. And then the next thing we do is we count the number of terms. You can have two terms, uh, four terms, or three terms. And right now, we're working on the four-term one. So every time we see something, after, if there's a GCF, we get it out of the way. And then after that, if it has four terms, the tech, this next technique is what we're going to use every single time. And I'll keep referencing this as we go through the factoring videos to try to help you see how to figure out what to do when. <clears throat> okay, so then here we got four terms, and what the goal is with grouping is you kind of just ignore the second two for a second, and you just look at what you got up front, x, y, and then 2y, and what's common to those two is the y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the y out front, it's going to leave the x in the plus 2. And so that's just that much of it. So the next, what I need this to do is I need to get another x plus 2. And you're going to see how come in just a second. But right here and here, those are going to have to match because it's going to end up being our GCF. So then I look at these two terms. And these two are going to go with this piece right here. And go, okay, what do I have to take out of this to make it do that? And so you can kind of see the 3. I told if I factor 3 out 3x and then there's a plus 6 so I pull a 3 out and then I get this thing so the reason I need these two to be the same is because that's now my GCF I took four terms and now I've kind of written it as kind of two multiplies if I have that then I can take that out front it's a lot like if I had um, if you think about if I had y x plus 3x in that case the x would be the GCF it would come out front leaving the y plus 3 this x is acting just like these x plus 2's. It's just in each of the terms we're going to take it out front. So x plus 2, and then y plus 3 is what's left behind, just like up here. So that's factored by grouping. That's how all the four-term problems are going to go. Um, you can always check factoring by foiling it back out. There'd be our x, y. On the outside, there's my 3x up there. On the inside, there's my 2y right there. And then 2 times 3 makes the 6. So you can always check by foil. Um, but that's that's the basic plan here for these four terms. It's always going to be group the first two, make the second two group the same way, and they, they will on these, um, and then just take that GCF out. So for number eight, um, similar, this one's kind of the too easy, it's hard. It's almost better when there's numbers and stuff. Um, so looking at those first two, they both have an X in common. 
So I'll take an X out front, it's gonna leave that Y. And then there's that minus sign is like there's nothing there, so that's where I need that one for a placeholder. So X, Y, and then minus X. So then here I need to get that same thing, right? And then you look and here is the exact same thing. So the trick there is just to do a plus one. Um, and then that would be that, kind of like this one where when we foil back, that's gonna get these second terms. And you can see right now, x, y, there's our minus x, one times y, one times negative one. So now that's my GCF, it comes out front, and then x plus one left behind. Um, I, you notice I just get, so, you know, y minus one comes out front. <clears throat> um, it doesn't have to come out front. You can write these in the other order too, and it's completely right. I just think of it as a GCF, so that's why I write it in the order that I do. Uh, number nine, this one has this little bit here where it's like, oh, should I collect terms? And the answer is no, we don't collect terms. Because um, then it turns it into a problem you don't know how to do yet. It's in the next section. So they're doing a little preview here. Um, <clears throat> so what we want to do is just take it as a four-term problem. So I got uh, 10 and 5, so I could take out a 5 and I have x squared and x. So that means I'm going to be able to take out an x. So 5x out front. And then that's going to leave me a 2x, and then there's that 1 again, so minus 1. I need to get this, and this is a great place to show that um, that sign sometimes messes people up. So once I'm confident that this is really what's left behind, I know that's what i got to get, otherwise the technique doesn't work. And realistically, we're in you know intermediate algebra, so the problems are designed to work. So it should do this. Um, but when you get here, a good thing to do is to go, okay, what do I multiply 2x by to make it, because that's going to come back to negative 14x. And what that does is it helps you see you need a negative 7 there. And a lot of times we'll write positive 7. Um, or they'll do, do a plus right here because they think they're doing something with a negative. But if you just write down what you need and then make that happen, it'll actually get there. And our double check is negative 7 times 2 is 14, negative 7 times negative 1, there's that plus 7. So write down where you got to go and make that happen. Uh, taking this out front. <clears throat> and then the 5x minus 7 is left behind. And one more over here. So with that, the best I could do would be a 6 and an x squared on those first two terms. So I'll do 6x squared. 6 times 24, so that'd be a 4 left behind. And then 2 out of 3 leaves me 1. And there's that where I took the whole thing, so that's going to be a plus 1 this time. Uh, from those two, I need to get another 4x plus 1. And so what do I multiply 4x by to make it negative 20x? So that'd have to be a negative 5. And then once I do that, I just kind of double check the second one to make sure everything's gone well. And there's my GCF, so 4x plus 1 out front. And then 6x squared minus 5 is what's left behind. Um, when we get a little bit farther into the factoring, this piece right here has the potential to keep going. Um, we don't, we haven't seen that yet. So, we'll, but we'll encounter it probably in a couple more sections. Um, when there's a square left, that means it may or may not continue to factor. So there'll be something we'll look for a little later. Okay, and then this last round would be the ones that I would have uh, the students try in class. So same, same stuff, just more practice. So here I got x's in common. So I'll take out an x, x plus three. And then we're, I'm sorry, uh, y, y plus three, x, ah, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so y plus three here. And then um, to make that come out, that y to come out negative three, I would need a negative three. So negative three y, and then negative three times three, there's our negative nine. And then there's our GCF, that comes out front. And then x minus three left behind. Uh, for 12, here and here, it looks like I have twos and y's in common. So we'll do a 2y out front, that would leave a 3x, and then plus 1. Right here, 3x plus 1. So all I need is a plus 1 to hold that. Uh, taking the GCF out front, 3x plus 1. What's left behind is 2y and the plus 1. Uh, for 13, so again, don't combine them. We'll just do a 5x out. And x minus 3 is what would be left behind. And then we'll do right down that other x minus 3. And then in doing that, what do I multiply x by to get back to plus 7x? So I need a plus 7. 
seven X and seven times three, yep, negative 21. And there's our GCF. And then leaving behind the five X and the plus seven. And then this last one, so from there I could do an X squared. So that right here, and that's gonna leave me an X and a minus five. And then I need that to happen again, so I'm just gonna write it down. And then I can kind of see there I need to do a negative six. Negative six times negative five does make negative, I'm sorry, positive 30. So there's my little check. Taking those out front. And X squared minus six left behind. Cool, so that concludes uh, the factor by grouping in GCF.